let's get started here. So you guys are outside of uh, the rose gold uh, uh, cottage, and you guys have a plan in mind. Let me uh, pick your guys' brain for a second. Um, what exactly are you guys planning to do here? No, switch the map so you guys have an idea of what we're looking at. I mean, I think essentially because of the fact that we are leaving the cabin, that we were essentially debating on whether we need to, to go find the goblin first, or whether to see if we want to take our chances finding the unicorn. I mean, my vote was to actually go find the unicorn, because then we were going to investigate what the hell was going on with the, you know, Zombrin. I also don't want to break the goblin's hope yet. Mm -hmm. We must let it grow and then crumble it. You know, like good people. And I'm just keeping a lookout as my little spider self for the time being, uh, looking for the wolf dude. Does Luya have any opinions? Uh, she'll take the option that means no death. Mm-hmm. So what we what you're saying is that if we follow Luya, there will be much death. Yeah. I vote for what Luya said. I mean, then obviously the option that will lead to the least death is uh, is taking away a unicorn's horn. <laughs> oh, the unicorn. Okay. Because <laughs> you know, once you've taken a, once you've taken a, a goblin's hopes, like you know, like will he want to live anymore? <laughs> <laughs> or excuse me, or she. Mm. <laughs> Unconfirmed. <laughs> Unconfirmed. <laughs> All right. So it sounds like you guys uh, perhaps want to try to find the unicorn first. Yes. That'll also give me a chance to talk with Eddie about needing some help with something, but that's okay. Yeah, that's the unicorn hunt. Let's do it. Okay, the unicorn hunt. So uh, where we're going to be uh, heading off to is uh, the bottom right of the map and just keep in mind uh i believe i mentioned this before but it's worth going over again that uh to travel from one end of the map to the other will take about a day um i do have the actual measurement for each tile but a lot of this stuff is blown up so uh it, it's easier to see land markers but uh towards that yes you guys can go out into the forest and begin to look for this unicorn. Is there any kind of precautions that you guys take along the way or anything I should know? Like, uh, what type of pace are you guys taking? I don't think we should take a rushed or normal pace. I think we should take the cautious approach. So if, I, if it was like a physical speed, half movement, to make sure that we could spot things. Hmm. I guess stick together because that guy's after Mavet, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then probably about halfway through, I'm going to transform back to my normal self. Mm hmm Okay. That sounds uh, perfectly fine. So you guys are taking a slow approach to this. Am I correct with that? Mm-hmm. Well, we're taking the cautious approach, and that will cause us to go slower. Yes. All right. All right. So at normal pace, you guys would be able to make it from one map uh, to the other. With this one, uh, you guys would be making it past into, I would say, uh, the evening. Um, if that is the case, I would like a stealth check from everybody. 
All right, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Let me make sure I double check my armor. Scale mail. Hmm. Okay. It's 11. Okay, yep. Disadvantage for that one. I need to definitely get some breastplate. Cool. Mm. Well, you know, considering how much uh, luck you had finding a shield. Ah. Hmm. Okay. You hurt me, Mega. That hurts me deeply. I just calls it like I sees it. Hmm. Okay. And I believe... Yep. Yeah. All right, so Luya got 11, Mavet 16, Seer 9, Eddie 18. All right, that's uh, good to hear as you guys uh, travel along. Now, I need to ask, are you just, uh, are you guys following a path? Or are you guys making a straight cut into the woods? What's happening here? Looking back on this map real quick. Ah! Mm -hmm. You dare? So it's what like I a... would say is, whatever I'm doing, I'm in the back of the line in case I need to break off. Okay. Back of the line. Um, If you guys would, uh, move your uh, tokens onto the map and show me the formation. How about we go over here then? To yeah. This spot. Yeah. Go on the road. Like, tell me. Okay, so straight line. Got you. Mm -hmm. Okay, very back for Eddie. All right, so in a straight line, we have a Seer, uh, for some reason, leading the charge. Aluya. Okay. I'll go. I'll yeah. Go. I don't want her to get hit by anything. Okay. And is the spacing correct, too? Like, uh, you guys, like, uh, treat, uh, just for now, for uh, the sake of the formation, treating each tile as five feet. Uh, let me get Rascal on here, too. I actually would put Rascal on Aluya. Uh, I thought he was doing Oh, never, yeah. mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. I was going to say, I forgot. Rascal isn't with you. I forgot. I love Rascal. Yep. <laughs> You're good. Well, okay, oh. never mind. Okay. All right. So we have Aluya leading the charge, uh, strictly behind her. We have uh, Seer. Then there is a, a 10 foot gap to which uh, Mavet is trailing behind, and five feet behind him, we have Eddie. That is the formation that we're taking. Are you guys making a straight cut through the woods? Are you following a path? Tell me. Is this a path here? Yes, it is. That is why I'm asking. Let's so if we want to take the short way, we could try to cross the river. But yes. if we follow the path, we might find a bridge. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm asking. Okay. Let's be honest. If we are going to do this right the cautious way... Mm-hmm. Going through uncharted territory is kind of like asking for death. Okay. But what we should do is kind of take the in-between. So we'll head towards kind of like the bridge area. Yep. But what we'll do is that we'll actually, if we're at like, let's say here, and we see like those tents yep. that you have right there, we'll go yep. around the tents okay. instead of just like through the tents. Okay. But we'll investigate it if we can. All right. That sounds good to me. Oh, hey, look, an adventuring party going to go across the bridge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hope we don't run into, run into any roadblocks. Mm-hmm. It's an inside joke. No one else is going to get it. Um, Let's see. 
Okay. That sounds good to me. Okay. So, as you guys uh, begin to go into the woods, it is hot. Very, very hot. You guys are sweating. We see, like, uh, the sweat beginning to uh, mat your guys' uh, hair onto your face, with the exception of uh, Seer and uh, Mavet. So, half the party. <laughs> um... Like I always like to mention, uh, the sky is black. There is an eye in place of a sun. And there is a uh, leviathan in the sky that wraps around uh, five times over. As you guys begin to make your way through the forest, you begin to see what looks like to be a fog, a haze. And it smells of smoke but you don't see a distant black fire or a black smoke uh, pluming on the horizon or anything like that. All you see is just a bit of uh, obscurement. And it does smell like burning wood. As you guys are walking, I really do want to know, uh, what kind of side chatter do you guys have along the way? I mean, I know in my case, Seer would probably, if, I only moved my tokens, I keep track. Hold on. I was just messing with character spell. Hmm. Um, how close is Eddie? Because if Eddie's not close enough, I'll talk to Aluya. Uh, I assume you guys are keeping the formation the entire time. So he would be, uh, 15 feet away from you. Okay. Unless you Imagine. decide to move. Problem is that that would mean I leave a Lily on their spot, so very much with Seer, they're gonna look to Aluya. And obviously, I know Aluya would know about the hat being not there because, like, mm. Seer always wears it. And instead, now they have mm. a golden cloak, which is rather strange. But ultimately, Seer kind of like just mentioned to mm. Aluya very briefly, in a sense, kind of being like, I think I just signed up a deal that is going to make my life harder. Boy, do I know about bad deals. Uh, <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe do you have to do the deal or no? Possibly. Well, I've been playing it safe for a lot of the times. And I have ways around issues that I need to get through, so... Honestly, it was a small sacrifice for something far greater. I feel like I should keep the deal because, well, if something has the power to know everything, they have the power to take that knowledge away. Mm. But that might be just my suspiciousness. I don't tend to think in that way. I just assume. All right. Well, if you feel that this is right for you, I will... Do what I can and help you. I think Make the sure best... That... Oh, go on. Make sure that if anyone has a problem with you, they have a problem with me, you know? <laughs> well, that's why I'm letting you know ahead of time that... Well, when people have a problem with me, it's not usually them getting angry. It's usually them being like, I must kill it right away. Right. I... You haven't seen that problem often, mainly because I've been keeping it in its back. I see. No, if you really wish to aid me, maybe there's two ways. Ultimately, well, one of the simplest solutions is always staying by my side. It's rare to find someone that I could call close. And not want to put my head on a pike. Oh, you chokes up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But number two, I had that hat for a while for other reasons. 
I I plan to talk to Eddie about something that might aid me, but in your case, I need you to keep an eye out for someone that has a deep hatred towards me. I've encountered them and I don't know why, but they seem to have a vendetta. Do you know what they look like? Briefly. I don't have many details. I tend to run as fast as I can before they could catch me. They seem specialized in a lot of ways. I don't know their full capabilities, but I know for a fact that they want me dead, in particular. It's one reason why I kept quiet about it, because I was afraid that when you turn tail, or if any of you turn tail, you would just sell me off to this person to just strike me dead. But my opinion changed when we were able to convince that fellow that also hated you. Uh, yes, Rory. Um, I guess he's still with the other group. I don't know what they're doing, but um, yeah, Sir, I'll, I'll do what I can for you. Um, Aluya, you do have a lurking worry uh, when you think about Rory, in that uh, you do recall that on the boat before you guys were deployed, if prisoners died other prisoners were tasked with retrieving the shackles it's an easy conclusion that should you guys not show up to the rendezvous that you might see Rory again on different terms Hmm. I mean that means at least he's not stuck on a boat yeah I mean, he's seen what we can do. Yeah. Nothing, no, nothing's ever in stone. Um, uh, I, sorry. Go right uh, no, go right ahead. I just want to say, DM, that uh, because you're saying our vision's a little bit obscured by this smoke, I was going to say that as Sears talking to me and we're walking through, um, I would kind of use thermaturgy, kind of clear the way for us to kind of see better. Um, what is, uh, what, what's the specifics on that spell? Let me double check. Um. Okay. Thaumaturgy. Uh. Boom. Flames. Tremor. Sound. Yep. Uh, appearance. Is he even capable of that? like wind right you're just pushing air yeah your voice booms up to three times louder flames flicker brighten uh harmless tremors in the ground uh instantaneous sound within range uh instantaneous yeah i was gonna say thaumaturgy doesn't seem right for that and if it was if you had say the cantrip say gust no (laughs) hmm yeah, I was going to say um, that that'd probably be more appropriate. Then I do nothing, sir. I'm just chatting away. Yeah. And as you chat away, like, uh, you get something in your mouth and it is disgusting. It makes you gag and cough for a second. Uh. Mega. Uh, uh. <laughs> 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 oh. I'm sorry, I I feel like a character assassination has just been attempted. Why <laughs> would anything associated with mm. me be in Aluya's throat? <laughs> I mean, that's fair. I know Mega enough to know that would not happen. Yeah. But, um. uh, Aluya, as you look around, I believe you're the first to notice. It, is it snowing? strange it's really hot so like i'm not a weather person so uh, is is it the time of year where it snows or what I... um well in this environment no well 
there's white stuff coming from the sky. Yeah. You look up to Seer, and you see white flakes begin to fall. Can I have one land in my hand? Yeah, you do. And it does not dissipate with your heat. It is, it is ice, though, correct? No, it is a white flake. Oh, it's ash, or something worse, it's skin. I'm joking. <laughs> it is ash. But, again... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just imagining yeah. just, like, all not dandruff. <laughs> um, you, you, yeah, it is a little disturbing. Again, you don't see black plumes of a distant fire. It, but you do see ash. You see a little bit of the haze of the smoke. You smell the burning of wood. But don't see anything nearby that would indicate that there is a fire. This is concerning. All right. Cover your mouth. It's too late for that. No, I'm just saying, like, just from the... Well, obviously it's too late for that. No, I mean, for the time being. Uh, before the, I shut it, uh, you are a, a heat person. Is this like you, your people? Can you make this happen? We have encountered so many things that can pull the unnatural. So my answer is very likely because I don't know why, but every single time that I have been coming to a location, somehow my people are involved. Mm. And uh, I do need to specify, you, you, you don't see the qualities of a sentient calamity or a watcher. Like you, you're not seeing a uh, genasi being born from the dead. In particular, uh, say the corpse that you guys uh, dealt with. You did not see a genasi uh, alternate rise from uh, that body. I could definitely say one thing, though. If it was my people, there's no Watcher about. So I think it might be either of natural source or it was just made. Best way to answer this question is we explore. I'll tell the rest of the others to cover their mouths. Ashes deadly to the lungs. Mm -hmm. I wow. can handle it a bit more, but even I'll have to eventually cover. Mm -hmm. Um, let's uh, have a little cut. Um, Eddie, my vet, what what kind of uh, small chat do you guys have as uh, you guys are walking? Oh, that's easy. No mm -hmm. small chat, because uh, <laughs> some of the some of the only interactions they have had, uh, it's like uh, have been very offensive. <laughs> Mavet, uh, do you have anything that you'd like to say to Eddie? So, I wouldn't be necessarily focused on talking to Eddie. I would be scouting, like, while we're walking, scouting out in the distance, looking for this crimson cloak. I want it to not be moving my head to make it look like I'm searching, but just using my eyes to move around Peripheral. so it doesn't yeah. seem like I'm caught. Yeah, peripheral vision. Gotcha. Give me a perception check as you're walking. And tell me the roll once you roll it. Eight. Okay, with an eight, as you uh, begin to look... Uh, again, using your peripheral vision, you you see them everywhere. The branches give you optical illusion of a uh, wolf's head. Like uh, I would even go so far as to say, like as you guys are walking around, you see two feral wolves uh, biting at each other's neck, infested with uh, the Zombrian. 
and just seeing the wolf's head is enough to shock you. Yeah, I would even go so far as to say, like, uh, if you even glance back once towards Eddie, you just see a red cloak over him for a moment before your eyes readjust. And I think uh, the Zombrian inside of you just keeps saying, Mavet, be careful. He's here. He's here. Over there. No. There. You just have that, yeah, that lurking feeling of paranoia that he could be anywhere. Can I do an insight check on the Zombrium to see if it's trying to be helpful or if it's also confused? Go right ahead. Fifteen. Uh, Alright. Give me a second. I'll make a roll myself. Again, gonna keep it hidden. Alright. Okay. So... As you, try, like, uh, describe the process, like, uh, what's going on? How are you trying to figure this out? Well, I'm, I'm noticing I'm seeing all of these wolves and you know, this crimson cloak. I know the Zombrium wants me to, like, develop me, but is it also, does it, if I die, does it benefit from it before it gets into me? Does it need a living host for the time being? I'm trying to figure that out. So is it trying to help? Or is it trying to get me to accidentally kill Mega? Or uh, Eddie? <laughs> so let me put it this way. I think uh, the revelation you get from the insight check is you're not paranoid. The Zombrian is. It's sending your senses into overdrive. It's trying to see where the threat is, but can't find it. It's essentially going into fight or flight, and it's trying its best to assist you, but it is failing. In fact, it, it's obscuring your uh, senses. Though towards uh, whether it's purposely doing it, trying to help you, it is trying to help you. It is just doing a poor job of doing so. Okay. So at that point, I would turn to Eddie and be like, Eddie, I seem to be seeing multiples of lots of dangerous beings. I, I think it may be the zombie I'm messing with whatever it, this is falling from the sky, it seems to be freaking out. Were you just wearing a red cloak? Um, Eddie, before you answer, can you tell me what Eddie looks like at the moment? Uh, at the moment? Yes. You're at Go9. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I imagine that uh, that Eddie is probably like right now in their like more smoky form, just to like you know like mm -hmm. occasionally like moving like one side of Eddie, and then like once seeing that part's clear, moving to the other side, and just okay. like kind of like billowing like uh, back and forth and around him. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, go on. Uh, but it's like a Eddie just cocks his head at that and and responds like no do I even own a red cloak <laughs> but I look good in red uh do me an insight check who uh, Eddie. Uh, can you tell me, uh, the entire role, please? Uh, it's an 18. 18? Yeah, you'd look really good with Crimson Cloak. 
<laughs> Note to self, like, get a crimson cloak in the next shop we get. <laughs> uh. Uh, Eddie, I'm very confused. I, I, I believe this Ash and my friend here are, are very not playing well together. Can you please, please just hold my hand so I know it's you and not something else? Hey, Eddie, can you hold their hand? <laughs> it... Eddie looks towards the hand and it looks back at you and does nothing. Is something wrong, Eddie? And I feel like as it comes close to you, Mabet, as you're watching this unfold, you are terrified. Make me a... Yes, make me a wisdom saving throw, please. Uh, 13 or higher. Total? That's 12. As you see... Echo Knight Eddie, talk to the Otter Eddie. You see that the face Eddie's Echo Knight takes is the form, the head, and cloak of a wolf, one that is hunting you. And instead of its horrifying red eyes, yellow ones glare back at you. From Eddie's point of view, nothing has changed. You just see Eddie come close and you get the feeling of danger. Mavet, you don't want to get that... any closer to Eddie, but continue. At that point... I would probably scream, get away, get away. And I'd make my way. I would just start sprinting towards the rest of the uh, forward, trying to find Seer and Aluya. Yeah. Uh, Eddie, anything uh, lingering that you'd like to say before I uh, uh, move things forward with the scene? So what's his deal? Dude needs to chill. The eyes look like it gives a nod, but it's hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to say at this point, time is synchronized between both these conversations. Uh, what is happening? Mavet, Seer, I know you two uh, both want to do something. Let's hear it play out. Anyway, I said, Aluya, I will... Tell the group about covering up. It's going to cause people issues if they try to breathe in the stuff. Especially if it gets worse further in. Well, okay. speaking of which... You see looking, a tree bar barreling towards you. <laughs> I push Aluya out of the way. <laughs> I, I can't seem to get my... My sense is straight. All I see is the wolf. The wolf is everywhere. Are you talking about the one that we heard about? Yes, yeah. The one. The one hunting. Hunting me. Mavet? You don't like the fact that Seer is wearing a cloak. Your your cloak, it's crimson, just just like the wolf. 
why does everyone have to wear this cloak? I think, if you want me to be kind to say this, but it is definitely not crimson. It's golden. My vet, why would she lie to you? Oh no, it, it was gold before I saw it. Indeed, that's what I'm saying. You saw. I'd probably be talking to the Zombrium with that. Mm. I don't know if I speak out loud when yes. I talk oh, okay, to the okay. Zombrium. I would assume so. You've never said that you spoke to it internally. Right. And I mean, this fits. It sounds like you're going along with Sirius' conversation, and Zombrium mm -hmm. responds. Yes, it's crimson. Wait, Muppet, do you hear that? Do you hear it? Hear what? Sarah, what would you say next? I, well, if they said that basically out yeah. loud about, like, it was golden, it's like, Yeah. You are correct. It was golden. It is still golden. In fact... I fear that if you are having issues, it might be something else. The very thing that you accepted yourself to connect yourself to might be the thing that might be causing your paranoia. My bet, before you respond. Everyone heard what Seer said, but for you, it sounded like bark, bark, woof. <sighs> Oh, God. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'd say, stop, stop barking at me. Stop barking at me. And I try to look over towards where I think Aluya is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I can see Aluya doing that. <laughs> really, she's just like dusting off the dirt. She just got pushed. Okay, so do they do they still look like the wolves, or do they look like they're just wearing crimson? Uh, visually, it looks like people are wearing uh red alternates of their clothes. Um, audibly, it sounds like that of a Dalek. You just hear barks, woofs, panting. Okay, can targeted spells? This is for Mega. Can targeted spells be? cast on self technically um, you generally are... speaking go ahead, go ahead. Uh, generally speaking unless the unless the spell says that you can't target yourself uh, usually you can okay mm -hmm. usually the caveat is like as long as you can see yourself and usually you can see yourself I bet you're invisible <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Wait, this is just like Skyrim. I can't see my feet. No, I'm, I'm Go third with person. Them. Go third person. <laughs> no, no, you're not invisible. I'm fucking with you. Go, go on. What do, what do you plan to do? So I cast deafness, blindness, and deafness with deafness on myself. Okay. Just because I'm, I'm seeing as I'm freaking out. I just want the barking to stop. So I just make myself go deaf. That way I can only. No one of my senses are playing tricks on me, and not multiple. Maybe a constitution save. I mean, if he willingly fails, he can fail. Not, not that. Noted. <laughs> All right. I think uh, you hear in your head. As you uh, flavor up the spell for me a little bit, please. Okay. So as Mavet is freaking out, you see some black. It looks like black specks coming from his back as they get darker and darker and more visible. They start to cloud around his ears, and it seems to penetrate into them, where. It, it looks akin to wearing earmuffs. Hmm. Yeah. Usually. Um. There's a flavor of. Yeah. 
wood vines with uh, uh, spikes around them that uh, also uh, go along with that. Mavet, I need you to write down that you are deaf. Okie dokie. It's it's okay, Mavet. We're we're here for you. He'll keep you safe. Remember, we're your friend. Um, Seer, during this time, you, you see this spell proc off. Uh, w what's your reaction? Aluya, what's your reaction? I would try to figure out what is going on. Because the big thing is like, you know, I don't want to think like oh they just are now ignoring me <laughs> no it's more of like i actually would like to see is like understand what how he operates because we still don't know much about mobed Ooh. i kind of want to see like what he just did to himself like was it natural or magical or was it kind of like they could just close their ears on and off make me an arcane check please with advantage Uh, tell me the total. Wow. Did I did I really roll that yeah. low? Wow. I <laughs> it is. I'll flash of genius for funsy. Is that that's a seventeen? Seventeen. Okay. With the seventeen, you know that he casts the spell blindness, deafness, but something went wrong. You don't think he could stop this. It, it seems like... I, I hesitate to say natural. But uh, it, it seems like uh, the natural has uh, mixed with uh, the mystical. And uh, created some sort of uh, abomination between the two. You, you think he's going to be deaf for a while. Sierra's going to look to Aaliyah and being like, well, now we know that we won't be able to talk to them. Well, I guess that's good. I don't know. He's being weird. First he's rude to Eddie and now he's being all freaky in the forest. I, what should we do with him? Well, the issue now is that I've seen this spell before. But it seems the spell, and this is a strange way to describe it, as it took it took root. So in other words, they can't turn it on and off. It seems to be on them. Well, let's check. We're gonna do some charades. She's gonna point at Mavet. You. She's gonna do the crazy symbol, and then maybe. My vet. Bark, bark, woof, woof. It didn't seem to help. Not even my hand gestures? No, not towards that. I'm talking about the deafness on himself. Mm -hmm. Bark, bark, woof, woof. Gosh. You know what? There's only one logical reason, or one logical thing to do. Uh, knowing you, you are such a logical person. Are you going to barrel forward? Yep. Okay. Not not, not into them, but I guess you just come yeah. back to me because I, I got them breaking off. All right. The, these uh. are evil people. <laughs> Boots, he's gunning off now. Hmm. Uh, does anyone do anything to stop him? I mean, if I try to stop him, the problem is is that 
we won't be able to grab them. So now that we might have to start the chase because I don't want to burn my things yet. Hmm. Plus, he's tanky, so at least if he runs in, he <laughs> won't. If he sets off traps, we're cool. Mm. But in other words, I'm going to tell Eddie in the back, like, we might need to pick up the pace. Mavet just vaulted. Hmm. All right. So, Mavet begins to vault, and I assume everyone begins to uh, do the chase. Mm -hmm. Well, hmm. it's best if my legs will carry me. Okay. I got you, boo. Slap Aaliyah on the back. Long strider. Yay. Uh, okay, my vet. Let's start off with you. Um. Well, first, I want athletics checks from everybody right now. And I want everyone to tell me uh, your roles. Um, in certain cases, uh, Eddie, uh, remind me. Can you go faster than usual using your Echo Knight? Uh, I can, yes. Okay, you can. Uh, do me a favor and roll with advantage. Um, does anyone else have any class features or uh, the spells that would assist with their movement? I have an extra 10 feet of movement speed. Okay. Uh, um, Mavet, roll uh, straight. Um, everybody else? I don't want to burn my spell for this right away. You sure? So, no, Just... I'm pretty sure because like I'm kind of keeping some spells as ace in the hole. So I, I burn long strider on Aluia so that they can stay with the group. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to roll normally. Okay. I'm going to guidance myself. Wait, do you have uh, Long Strider on yourself, Aaliyah, right now? Yeah. Uh, roll with advantage. Ooh. And I will guidance myself just in case. Yeah. And, and just to clarify my train of thought with uh, this so the audience knows, um, Eddie and Luya both have uh, uh, some perks to assist with their speed. Uh, Ma Vet, although uh, with his uh, class uh, natively uh, gets additional speed as well. I'm using that to uh, cancel off to, uh, the exhaustion to give him a fair chance at this. All right. Uh, what's all the rules? Guidance, Aluya. Guidance. Yeah, I know, I know. I know. Mm -hmm. So bad still. Wow. Oh my god. Um, Mavet got a 13. Eddie yep. got a four. Yep. I don't. It's just like, yeah, that's just a bad luck on my part. Yeah. Um, I got a 15. And Aluya got 11. <laughs> Actually, wow. you know what I think it is? Is that like, Eddie is still pretty butthurt from a, from a little bit. It's like, so he's can't really will himself to go that much faster. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Let's focus on Seer and Mavet then. Uh, Mavet, one more time with your roll. It was a 13, correct? Yes. Okay. 13 and a 15. Okay. I'm not going to say that's enough to catch up with them. You're just maintaining pace. Uh, Aluya and Eddie are falling behind. And as you guys begin to run, uh, Mavet, Seer, uh, paint the scene for me. We see the uh, trees uh, rushing past the camera, branches scraping at both of you as you uh, uh, go along the path. We see dirt begin to uh, be picked up by your feet. Uh, paint the scene on how you guys are running and what you're doing to uh, uh, keep running. And Seer, I want a little bit of legwork from you. How are you outperforming Eddie and Luya, both of which, who, who you know, should be faster than you? All right, then I'll start off explaining basically how I'm keeping up with Mavet, because the idea is that, well, Seer doesn't often run in high speeds like this. So what they did is, like, after they, you know, slapped Luya with Longstrider in hopes that they could keep up, Seer is basically taking the path of least resistance, but more importantly, 
and I'm thinking this is what's happening. Seer's not affected by the heat as much. So Seer is just naturally running quicker than everybody else because they're not feeling exhausted or overheated. They're very much like just bolting along mm. as if it's like a nice brisk walk or a brisk okay. run as normal. The other thing that might be helping Seer out catch up with like Mavette possibly is just the fact that well, actually, never mind. Well, that might be running faster because I'm running towards them with a cloak. Mm. But the idea is that Seer, they're not going like barreling through everything, maybe like Mavette. They're actually planning out their route. They're going through. They're not very, they're not like the fastest person, but they are the quickest thinking person as they just kind of like navigate through the pathways and seeing gaps and things they could jump over. Okay. So, uh, they're, my yeah. Mavet, uh, do me a favor. Uh, make me a dexterity save and explain how you are running. How are you uh, trying to outrun Seer? A four on the dexterity save. All right. Roll me. So how? I'll remind Mavet that you do have advantage if you didn't roll with it. Well, I'm not, um, what's it called? I believe it's uh, inherent, raging. isn't it? Or you just That's always just an ability this. you have as of level two. Yeah. I thought it was only raging. Fourteen. Fourteen. All right. Roll me 48. Take half the damage. What's the total? My bet. No, okay. It was it wasn't rolling right. Oh so sorry. Twenty seven divided by two, so round up or round down? Round down. Thirteen. Thirteen. All right. Take thirteen points of damage as you begin to run through these woods. Uh, you do hear, or no, you don't hear. You see uh, arrows hiss by you, and a few of them strike at you. And he's here. You have to keep running. Uh, flavor up your run for me. So as I'm running to get away from all the wolves, I'm... Like looking back, and as I look back, I hit a branch, but with my momentum, I'm able to break through it. And I just keep running, running after branch after branch, just like hitting my shoulder, but being as big and as momentous as I have all this momentum running away, terrified, just breaking through them. And then I would assume uh, where my token is, there'd be some sort of crossroad. Not trying yet. and okay, not yet. Yep. So just I'm just focused on getting away and just breaking through whatever is in my way, but not like say like a big tree pops up. I'm trying to avoid it, but like any branches or stuff, I'm probably getting hit by on the way. Okay. Uh, Seer, make me a perception check, please. My best skill. Mm-hmm. I'll flash of genius to make it a 13. That is exactly what you need. Um, Looking at the arrows, they're very shoddily made. It, Even the fletching seems to be uh, very piss poor. It seems like uh, they have uh, feathers from all sorts of different creatures. The uh, arrow tip is made of stone it seems very primitive um to tell you in particular and i will not offer this to mavet with his current state of mind it it doesn't seem like this is the person hunting you guys you've seen the arrow you've seen the craft this is not it but what you do know is you have alerted something 
or some people that you are in this neck of the woods. What do you do? Keep chasing? Problem is that I can't yell to Mavet. Yep, because <laughs> he's fucking deaf. <laughs> and the big thing is that if I'm chasing after them, then I basically am also putting myself at risk as, like, if he's just running through traps thinking, like, he's being hunted, he's eventually going to encounter something that's going to kill him. Okay. I'm going to keep going until there is a certain point of danger. Because the big thing is that I have ways to get around these situations, but I'm not pulling the card yet until I know for a fact that Mavet put himself in a situation where it's, he got himself in an impossibly stuck spot. Mm. But I am going to try to help him out if there's a chance I could get him out. Because the problem oh. is I can't help a crazy person. Nope. They gotta help okay. themselves. Let's talk about the first thing that Mavet passes through. Mavet, as you begin to run, charge, you begin to go past uh, two tents. One red, one blue. As you begin to uh, run past, you hear... You don't hear. Fuck. That is my go-to sense. Uh, as you begin to run, you see a couple chickens in a pen. And as you run by you do see, like, two goblins. One smoking from a pipe, the other one, like, uh, uh, crafting uh, something. Does this stop you at all, or do you charge right past them? Did they look at me or any sort of way that I would have noticed? Or am I just... If, am I what? going fast enough that I probably just glance at them? One of them waves at you. Waves at me? Yeah. Gives you a friendly wave. I would I'd probably... Oh, at that point, I would probably go up to them if they don't look like a wolf. Mm. Or do they have a crimson cloak on them? One is wearing red, the other one blue. I'd go up to the blue one and try to hide behind them. Okay. Uh, they have a tent. Would you like to hide in the tent? What color is it? Blue. Yeah, I probably hide in the tent then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it makes a suck in my case is that yeah. then I can't chase them because then mm. I might walk into a situation where I make goblins want to murder me. Okay. Go on. To I the know map. my decisions are super stupid, but I just gotta, you know, role play it correctly. Okay. Don't worry. Let me uh, bring everything onto the map here. Right, it was the blue tent he hid in? Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me turn on the lights for the map as well. Sorry if it's black for a moment. Just one more moment, por favor. I didn't expect this map to spring off. I oh. mean, he did go crazy. Yeah, yeah. Let's see my bag go crazy. Let's see what might happen. Yep. Luya, you're the first person on the scene. You can uh, move yourself wherever you want. If, uh, say, for example, you want to try to take the stealthy approach, or if there's any other tactic you'd like to take. Okay. I'm waiting for the screen to load. Yes, it's fine. One mo moment, por favor. Okay. Yeah, uh, typically I like to preload these uh, scenes before I show them to you, but this one's a little bit unexpected. Mm -hmm. Yep. But uh, yeah, you see Red Goblin, Blue Goblin, Seer, uh, give me uh, your tactic here. And it's fine Let's if you see. can't see the yeah, I was gonna say it's fine if you can't see the map at the moment. Well the problem is like once he hits like these goblins that are are they visible? Yep. One, are they wearing cloaks? Uh no. 
Did you just run into a goblin encampment? Oh my god. Mm. Um. Okay. Then, if I was going to assess the situation... Or repeat that, you cut out. Oh, I was just going to say, it's like... It doesn't look like a goblin horde of, like, simple armor and stuff like that, or, like, anything like that. It just seems like a traveling camp. You see camp. a lot of weapons laying around, a lot of shields, a lot of provisions. If Only I knew, I would, buy, I would buy so many shields. Hmm. Anyway... Only two goblins. Well, the problem is I'm in this situation because, well, this is not the right. This isn't the right. I just gotta say, it's like, because I don't look like this, I look like Genasi. So very much, I would be at the very edge with my hood up. Immediate. Okay. Your hood and is then up. I kind of will wait for the crew as I'm, I'm what I'm going to do is basically very much stop and wait till I see... I see Mavet run into a tent, and I'm not going to do anything else except just, um, like, watch that he first, when it's Yeah, I know you're keeping up pace. Uh, give me a perception versus a stealth check. So, Seer, give me a perception. Uh, Mavet, uh, stealth with disadvantage because you're exhausted. 19. Try to beat that shit. <laughs> Almost. All right. So yeah, you obviously see it. Then I will stop in my tracks until I see the group catch up because I can't approach them closer without possibly instigating a fight since they would mm. want to murder me. Mm -hmm. The rest of the group uh, catches up. Uh, Seer, Eddie, uh, please flavor a little bit how you guys are running. How are you guys trying to catch up? I'm already there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. yeah. I mean, I'm sticking with the the half joking, half serious thing. Just like I think, like uh, like neither Eddie nor Eddie are feeling that particularly motivated to catch up with Mavet. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like, it's just it's like you know, like. Eddie himself is just like like making a half-hearted attempt to like just move a little bit faster than normal and maybe uh and like maybe like Eddie is trying to like Eddie port him just a little bit further than he normally would but it's just <laughs> like there's just just not a there's just not much of a collective effort going on here to make them go as quickly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Aluya? Uh Aaliyah is not used to being this quick, so she's kind of fumbling over herself a bit, but she knows that she kind of promised here that she'd stick close by her, so she's trying to get there as fast as she can, so she's not really paying attention to, like, rocks and stuff. She's just kind of tripping over things, but she gets her way there. I, I kind of want to imagine, unbeknownst to you, things have been appearing in your path from a uh, puff of smoke. <laughs> just, oh, oh shit, there's a rock there. Oh, dude, not quest enough. Okay. Okay. Just move it. <laughs> well, I moved as quickly as I could, which was really fast for me. Mistakes were made. Lots of tripping. Are you okay? Eddie, uh, before we continue on this conversation. Eddie, I think this is one of the few times that you've seen Eddie really having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Seems deep down in there he does have a sense of humor. <laughs> oh, go on. So Seer respond basically going, they ran into the tent, but I don't think I can approach. Okay, okay. Uh... I. It doesn't seem like a large group. I only see two of them, and are they dressed like raggedy, or are they dressed like merchants? Dressed like merchants, and they... you see, you see both of them trying to get your attention. You uh, uh, see the red one go, uh, "Come over here, come over here," and the uh, blue one go, "No, no, 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 over here, over here."
Do you want to go investigate that? Also, they ran into the blue tent. Blue tent. Uh, I will check out the red tent because you're smart. You can look for the blue tent and I'll be close by and run to you if you need help. Um, I don't think you under... Hmm? Looks back to Eddie to see if Eddie's willing to help. Oh, because the thing... Uh, yeah. You... Right, okay, 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 okay. Um, hmm. All right, so you stay here. I'll try to talk to them both. All right, I appreciate that. So sorry. And you see the blue one motioning you over, the red one motioning you over. And you see that they're slinging insults at each other. The red one says, No, 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 don't go to Strat. Strat has terrible goods, terrible goods. And the blue one just goes, No, 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 don't go to Brock. He cheats people, cheats. Okay. Uh, hello, sirs or madams. I don't want to assume... Uh, a friend of ours has come through this way. I think maybe he went into the blue guy's tent. Did you see, you see him? You, you see the blue one. He uh, takes a moment, darts his eyes a little bit, and just goes, No, we haven't seen a tree person. And you see the red one go, Yes, you went into the blue tent. You son of a... Yes, I know you're lying over there. You lie to your customers. I see. One of you lies and one of you's telling the truth, but I have it on good authority that somebody saw our friend go into blue man's tent. No, 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 no. Yes, yes, yes. Well, he's having trouble hearing, so maybe you could go in and bring him out. Uh, the blue guy goes, Trees can hear? Then covers his mouth. Yes, this particular one can hear, but not at the moment. Hmm. Hmm. Takes a moment. Think. Goes back to the tent opens up the flap Mavet you see the goblin open up the flap a little bit poke his head in and you see it begin to talk to you but you don't hear anything what do you do just in a scared tone I, I, I can't hear you I can't hear you I need to get away get away from the wolves hmm Aluya, make me persuasion check. Oh boy, I'm gonna guidance me. <laughs> Fantastic. What? What's the total? <laughs> Fifteen. 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 That's enough. I think uh, with your argument and him being deaf and him confessing that he's deaf. The goblin, thinking for a moment to provide an escape for Mavet, instead reveals Mavet in tent. You see the flap open up. And Mavet, um, you see Aluya out in the center of uh, the dirt road. Waving gingerly at him. Kind of making the beckoning signal. Like, Come here, you can do it. Come back. They're lying to you. He gave you up. You have no friends. Water. Water. Who has water? Fit. Come on. The... What? The goblin points to a barrel. How big is the barrel? Five feet by five feet. Okay, perfect. Um, so I am going to 
shape water, mm. freeze it, because I can't freeze it with creatures in it, mm. and then I am going to take the Zombrium arm and just try to keep punching through the ice until it's I can get fully submerged in the cold um, ice. Uh, I'm sorry, what's your intentions behind this? Well, you, we established he doesn't like cold, so maybe he would stop talking for a second if he's around cold. Hmm. Um, I believe we established that they don't like fire. No, it was cold. For sure. sure. Okay. But you are correct. I just couldn't remember if I told you that or not. But yes, um, after enough punches, uh, the voices in your head begins to die. And take off the deafened condition. Still trying to beckon him. Come, perfect. Uh... We are good. Thumbs up. Mm -hmm. What do I hear? You hear exactly what you hear. Ah, oh, uh, the barking. The barking stopped. Oh, the barking. Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> hey, hey, man. Like, what's going on with you? Ever, ever since the, the flakes, the white stuff from the sky, it, this, my friend here, he, he, he got scared, and I, I saw, I saw the one hunting me everywhere. You, everyone was barking, barking at me. Mm. It wouldn't stop. Sure. Um, I want to just point something out though that you have been weird since before. The white stuff came down from the sky, so what's up with that? <laughs> what's up with that? <laughs> what do you mean, weird? Well, I guess now is not the time to discuss it, but that it was an event with Eddie that eventually has to be discussed because that's not cool. Um, but yeah, you have been weird, man. Like, you, like you having like a mental breakdown or something or what's with your arm you know what no, is up with your arm ma vet because you don't recognize it oh gosh what's it look like now up to your forearm a lot of vines and spikes that are traveling up from that finger it seems like it's a little bit more rooted now that amputating that finger won't do you any good anymore? Well, you know, well, in for a finger, in for an arm. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Oh, I, I, that made me laugh and forget the question again. I repeat. So, uh, uh, yeah. like so, like, a lot of things have been happening with you, and your arm looks freaky. What's going on with that? I'm trying to understand my friend here as I point to my new arm look. Uh, he he seems confused, He, but he can change. He doesn't need to be how he is. Uh -huh. you, you said weird to Eddie. Is Eddie mad at me? It's not so much Eddie is mad at you. It's like you are a dick and you have hurt his <laughs> feelings. <laughs> He's not what? angry at you. You were just acting like a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you all are have been nice to me besides the barking. What do you mean? Why else would I be with you? Oh, yes, but let me just backtrack to that whole friend thing. Um, your friend looks evil as shit. Why <laughs> do you keep him around? 
You would think one serving gods would understand that there is some good in everyone. Oh, damn it. You got a little point there, but... <laughs> it seems like zero good is there. It's my like bad. <laughs> My, my bad. Bad. Get, no, no my bad. Back. Give yourself 100 EXP for that comeback. I'm sorry, that was good. Fuck it out. <laughs> that got me. <laughs> I get more XP from my one-liners than I do it, actual. It that one in particular is really good roleplay, and I don't want to forget that one. That that was a really good point. Oh mm. shit. You're saying mate. <laughs> I was gonna say, maybe you need to look a little deeper. Sure, I can try that, but I just want to point out that since you befriended this thing, uh, things have been going poorly for you. And it's affecting other people. Well, I'm making the sacrifice to help save another. But what if your one sacrifice kills, like, many people? I'll die before that. Uh, Alright, dude. Uh, can you come back to the group, please? Uh, thank you, goblins. Appreciate your service. Uh, or lies? I don't know. Thank what? you. You you're not going to buy anything? Well, it's not the really time to buy. Or maybe, well, I don't know. No, it's not I have time. food. I have weapons. Uh, we we'll come back to that. Just give us a moment. We got to get our friend back. I still need money for the water your friend used. Which, thank you. I was actually just about to pay him for the water. He, yeah. I've, you usually it would be one, one gold. Well, usually it would be one gold, but he he kind of destroyed my barrel with that. Oh well. Um... One gold, five silver, please. I suppose. I Do you have me. chain? I got it. Nods. Just, just go back to the group. Just just go. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Seer, I need a stealth from you. Or, uh, what, actually, what would you prefer to be inconspicuous? Let me take a look at my skills, because ultimately, the best approach that I think Seer can do right now isn't exactly walk up and talk. It's more of like, I don't want them to walk up close to me. Yeah, like, uh, you, you could, I, I would go so far as to say you could do stealth, you could do performance, um, even though this, you, you aren't trying to draw attention, I, I'm imagining more towards, uh, acting inconspicuous. If I had to pull a role like that, sadly, I'm very much a DM at heart, so the skill mm -hmm. I would have to pick automatically is deception. Deception, there you go, I like that. Right oh, out. but it's gonna suck though because that's the skill I'm not good at. But it's better than disadvantage on stealth. Wants a shield and wants some spares and. <laughs> Make the roll. Tell me what you get. I get a thirteen. Mm. But I don't want to risk dying, so another flash of genius. Eighteen. You've been using a lot of last geniuses lately. I know, I have, because I've been trying to, like... The big thing is that I'm trying to make it so that the party doesn't die. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, the blue goblin, uh, Strat, uh, is not aware of who you are. And continues to, uh, do his business. Uh, Luya, did you take one gold and five silver off? Uh, Just take off five silver. I'm taking a gold for me. Okay. However you guys want to organize this. Hmm. Okay. okay. Well, I took off the gold before, but... Okay. That's right. So, 
what is the game plan now? You guys are amidst two goblin merchants who seem to have a lot of uh, weapons, armor, provisions, might even have some uh, magical items. Oh, look, there they are, Betty. <laughs> gives gives a look like uh, you you know his mannerisms like so well by uh, the rotation and movement of his eyes. You can get like the expression he's trying to convey. He uh, tilts at a forty-five degree angle, like he's shrugging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that. <laughs> hey, bros. Hey, Eddie. Um, actually, I want to hear a little bit from Eddie. I haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, what, what's your initial thing that you uh, say to the group as you approach? So you say, hi, guys. What's the response? Uh, Seer? Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, I was just about to say, hey, seems as if the situation was resolved. No more barking. Oh, like, oh, his arm looks ugly now. That's another thing I'll have to discuss to you about in private. But yes, it it's rather grotesque. So, yeah. just uh, hey, bros, I see it. some goblins. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> They wave at you. I'm treating you over. Please come to my shop. No, come to mine. Well, looking to Eddie, it's a blessing and a curse for, well, if it is a shop. If you need to take a look at both of them, why not split between the two of you? I can't approach, though. I... I very much don't want to cause a fight. Hmm. Like, do you need anything, little dude? I can, like, try to see if I can pick something up. Steer kind of, like, thinks to themselves for a bit and goes, like, Honestly, if I had to say... I don't have a lot of wealth, but we are needing to handle horrible situations like this, so a lot of oil. I don't think they have armor for cheap, though, but I have enough to buy oils. Hmm. Um, Just so uh, everyone knows, if you do approach the goblins within five feet, double-click on their token, it should open up a small shop. Oh, snaps. If I have it done correctly. It looks like Mavat's already looking at one. Yep. Uh, which, which is the magic goblin? They both have magic items. Oh, that's pretty yep. badass. Yep. This is so cool. <gasps> Ooh. Yep. There's a lot of cool things. You just need to get within five feet of uh, uh, the goblin you choose to uh, talk to. I want to look at them, but I don't know what they have there, so I'm just gonna like I'm just gonna look at it for fun. But for Eddie's sake, I'm just gonna be like, if there's also anything you need me to look at, I can. I have the ability to view things, if possible. Uh, please look at my wares. Uh, what about your friend? I we wish to sell. What about me? You see Strat say as uh, the the others uh, move away from him. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'd like to see both of them, Eddie, if you can. But ultimately, if I if they sell armor for cheap, fine. But I'm more interested in oils or things that we might need to look into, such as. Well, scrolls and books and anything that can help us like, learn. What about this? Like, I'll go over to a shop and I'll just like 
tell you in your brain what I see. Yeah. I, I would also like that as uh, well, just so the audience gets to see it because they don't get to see the interface like uh, uh, you guys. Sounds fair. Hmm. Oh, yes! Yes! Everyone's coming to Strat Shop! Yes! And you hear Brock and Disson go, No! No, come to me! Oh, don't worry, little bra. I'll be over there, too. Yes! Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, I can't figure fully how this works. You said right uh, click, left click? I believe, uh, just so uh, Mavet, Louis, you both have been using it, it's uh, left click once, right? Yeah. And it should pop up in the interface. Well, when you say in the interface, like, where is it supposed to appear? It, it's just, yeah. Sorry, double click. Yeah, double click on yeah, on double. their tokens. Yeah, there you go. Sorry. Okay, that makes it's just like okay. Seriously, uh, guess what the fuck is it? <laughs> yeah. No uh, apologies. I tested it before this. It's just I can't do it with you guys. I need a token on screen or my own token on screen. Oh, yes. Tree Man comes to Brock. Brock has many wares. Please, have a look. I have sickle swords, malls, supplies with uh, for an alchemist. Ooh, I have so much parchment, spell books, hammers, potions. Is there See, you do you get a you do bomb? get a message in your brain, like, oh, bruh, they do have some oil in here. <laughs> <laughs> Good, that will help me out greatly. Oh yes, Strat sees you see the oil. Yes, I have plenty of oil. But uh, yes, uh, RPs, you guys are uh, looking through the uh, wares. Like, uh, what's going on through your head? Were you uh, bullshitting with the goblins? I ask the goblins if they're willing to buy. Oh, it depends, Tree Man. It depends. What do you have? I I'm just going to say this out loud. I have leather armor, quarter staff, a shield, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, doo -doo. Which one are you talking and to, Brock or uh, Strat? Red one. Yeah. Uh, Brock uh, says, ooh, I would love that. I also got food and water skin. I would love that as well. Please give it to me. Well, what are you willing to buy for it? Mm. Uh, what, what, what were you offering again? Okay, I'm offering leather armor, a quarter armor. staff, and quarter staff. Uh, one day of rations, a water skin. That's really it. I was hmm. saying I have a shield for sale. Hmm. I already have a shield. Set. Oh, okay. Then I will sell my shield as well. This. Yes. 13 gold pieces is what I'll give you for that. Ooh. Where did you get these? Can you do 20? No, no! Are you trying to cheat, Brock? No, I just like higher numbers. Sorry. I Brock. like lower numbers. Okay, so what's lower than 20? 14. 13, 5 silver. And 2 copper. No! 
Okay. You may get blood from a stone, five. but you will not get blood from Brock. Thirteen five. No. Isn't it's thirteen four said? now. Okay, thirteen three. Deal. Shake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, take that off your sheet. Give yourself thirteen gold, uh, three uh, silver pieces. I believe you can make offers in this, but I still haven't had it fully figured out yet. Yeah, no, like you were, uh, you were basically correct though, Sierra. It's just like, uh, considering like uh, this is one of those games where we're always like uh, hmm. running low on money. Yeah. Or actually, now that I think about it, we don't really have many chances to earn money. So. Uh, yeah. Yep, and uh, with Foundry, I'm hoping to fi uh, fix that aspect, like uh, with shopping and uh, a loot, to do a better job with that. But uh, yeah, these uh, merchants are available. Um, if you guys want, since uh, we're kind of focusing on the shops a little bit, uh, would everyone like to take a uh, good 15-minute break, come back to it uh, after making some purchases? Yeah, I'd be... Okay, thank you. Let me get us out of here.
if I'm going to sell something, then... Well, funny enough, like I said, I can make the whole party enough gold, because you see all how priced the all the resistance potions are? Mm-hmm. I have well, the welcome back. Of, <laughs> I have the potion of invulnerability. Okay, potion of invulnerability. All right. I'm just curious how much that would sell, but I don't think I'll sell it. That is a legendary item. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So any questions or RP with these uh, little merchants? It seems a bit strange that goblins set up shop inside of the woods. Uh, hey, little dude. Referring to one of the goblins. Yes! Brock is I. Yeah, little dude. Uh, Brock. They're like... Blink, blink. <laughs> <laughs> Say it. Little Brock? Mm -hmm. Yes, Otter Man. Says it with a hard, hard R. Ooh. <laughs> Just the so silence. Like, so, like, there a reason why the two of you both sell spell books? Shh. As I sell a spell book, you see Strat across the street, going through his wares, distracted. Oh, yes, hold on, we... maybe I should ask a little louder. Hey! Uh, why no, do you no. have a... D down! Ask down! Yes, I... I sell it. What of it? Uh, I'm sorry, I just have a... Just like as he like puts like a finger in like one of his like ears. I'm having a bit of trouble remembering what you called me. <laughs> Big man. What a bit. <laughs> Maybe say you're sorry, big man. He called me a name first. He did not. I took offense to that. My How parents always know? called me a little man. But you're not a little man, you're a, you're a little dude. I call a lot of people little dude. Yeah, true. Dude is an offensive word in the goblin community. But we did not know. You know now. Uh, you know, you, you're a racist piece of shit, so... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> just hands up in the air. Whoa, 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 I, I'm not trying to be racist here. I'm just calling them as I see them. <laughs> we all heard the R sound you made. <laughs> that was good. Give yourself 50 Steer XP takes a deep for that. Breath and goes like, dodged a bullet there. Bo both of you take 50 XP for that. That was good. <laughs> Beautiful, I love you too. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Look. Yes, I got the book and I got it from somewhere. Do you want to buy it? Eyes fixated on Strat's book across the street. And if you look closely enough where it's placed, you, you see a book and right next to it is like a uh, there's dust with the outline of where a second book should be. <laughs> well, if he's interested, how about you bring down the price for, I don't know, reparations for using that word? <sighs> Half price. 
What do you say, Eddie? It's like, all right, let. My pause is like, is Vela all right? That is a very racist word in the goblin community. Do not use it. Bra? Bra is acceptable. Alright, then I'll take it, bra. Okay. I'll change the price to 25. There you go. Should be good. And he hands you the book, and there's just malice in his eyes. And also, the welling of tears as you've brought back memories from his childhood, being bullied. Which, uh, once again, just immediately undercut by his very purposeful bullying of a customer. <laughs> 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 what was an accident it was an oopsie his was <laughs> malicious how's he supposed to know how offensive otter is it's otter. not otter it's otter I don't like how hard you pronounce the T in otter <laughs> oh uh, RP from uh, anyone else, uh, Mavet. Any questions for uh, Strat? Yes, Tree Man. Uh, this is acceptable. Piece of shit can hurt themselves. What? No, I'm sorry. Uh, you cut you. I said that in my head. Okay, you, you cut out. I didn't hear shit. <laughs> okay, we're good. No, I have no RP. I got something after we're done uh, mm. buying and selling. I'll actually, uh, uh, Eddie will, like, walk over with the book. Yeah. Oh, um, with the, the other purchases and, yep. uh, and uh, hand it to, um, uh, to Seer. Hey, little dude, I noticed you like to write stuff, but don't actually have a lot of paper to do it in. <laughs> you are correct. Did like, you... I've been told spellbook pages are like really good for writing in, so like here you go, little dude. <laughs> Grabs the book. What does it say in the front if it has any covers or anything like that? As you look at the book, you see that it has oh yeah. Embroid can you embroider uh, a leather? Yeah, that sounds correct. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, well, I was just trying to think if it's the right word. Uh, actually, I would say it's gilded. Like, you, you see a little gold uh, trimming along with it. And it has a fla uh, flower at the very center of it. And as you open the book, it says Livy Rose Gold inside of it. As the owner. Oh. Hmm. Was there anything suspicious that he kept acting as when he was talking about this book? Uh, like, well, between you and me, he stole it from the other guy. <laughs> Gotta imagine, like, a distant, WHAT?! <laughs> uh, and it is something completely unrelated like uh Aluya asking Strat <laughs> like uh for a discount and goes no I cannot do that <laughs> I have an idea then maybe then we don't tell them about the other book but we try to get the other book if possible or if we can assess it Might be able to figure something out because this is, well, I don't know if you know about this, Eddie, but a mage 
with their book is deadly and potent. This one, well, I didn't take a look through it fully, but they don't tend to lose their books. Best way to explain that. But yeah, I, like, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, most of the stuff that either one of them have is stolen. But, like, you don't bring it up at the table, you know? Indeed. Mm-hmm. I have some things I could have you sell. And why don't you visit Strat a bit? And then we could see how that can play out. Hmm. Um, yeah. Um, when it's time, I would like to sell some things to Strat as well. Yeah, you can just drag and drop on the interface and I'll prove it if it seems appropriate. Okay. Um, so, uh, Eddie, do you look at the other book? Yeah, I guess he'll, like, well, wander over with, uh, <laughs> with Seer's stuff and... I give you a crossbow. Also give you a potion of clairvoyance. Doesn't have a price on it right now, but the idea mm. is that it is a potion custom made. I have two mm. of them, if I remember correctly. Mm. All right. Ooh, that looks beautiful. I'll give you, yes, 30 gold pieces for the shiny liquid. Oh, uh, don't you want to know what it does? No, it is shiny. <laughs> it is special to me. Oops. What? <laughs> uh, Luya attacks the poor no. goblin with the spear. That was a misclick. I'm trying you, to. You have it targeted. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can understand like accidentally pressing the action, but you <laughs> this is purposeful. I, I just double clicked it and it happened. I'm trying to sell the the spear, my old spear. Dra yeah, dragon drop onto it. Yeah. And my okay. butcher's cleaver is not listed in my inventory. Uh it's fine. Um if it's the butcher's cleaver twenty five gold for that. Okay. Yep. All right. Eddie, let me hear it. Yeah, just like, uh, how would he put this? Yeah, so I think, like, it's like, well, like, lucky for you, I have two of them. But you might want to actually, like, use one at some point. You know what it does? Mm -hmm. Does it get me high? Well, I don't think so. I mean, if you're looking for something to get you high i have something else for that but <gasps> let me see it don't tell brock let, let me see the goods oh my god <laughs> we could have made more money from getting them drugged up oh <laughs> uh which case uh in which case, like, uh, Eddie will just, like, slowly let one of his, like, small bags fall from his sleeve. <laughs> ooh, ooh, yes, yes, yes. Oh. Looks to the left, looks to the right. How much is it? Like, uh, how much are you giving him? Hmm. <clears throat> You know, really thinking about it, I probably should have, like, uh, 
at some point figured out what would have been like the the go-to street price for a small bag of one of these. <laughs> well, make me a D20 roll. Uh, well, hang on. This is uh, shit you'd give to the common man. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think what would be a good amount. I mean, they're seeking it, so... Yeah. Lastly, how rare I think it's probably going to raise the price a little bit yeah. uh, for it being out in the middle of the woods, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bum fuck nowhere. Hey, baby, can you turn that down a little bit? How much is it? It's just like, uh, you know what, Eddie will think for a moment and, like, he'll he'll retract the bag of it. It's like, how about this? I'll give you five little bags of a higher cut and you give me that Baby. book over there. As he just, like, uh, points at the spell book. <laughs> Can you turn that down a little bit, please? Yeah. Please. Like, wear headphones, anything. Love you. And he'll add, once you've had a bit of this stuff, you'll be able to smell colors. Smell colors? <gasps> I'm sorry, I missed everything else you said. Um... Could, could you please repeat that for me really quick? <laughs> uh, Eddie said that he was like uh, yeah. cutting a deal where he'd yeah. give you, give him uh, five bags of the higher cut quality stuff Ooh. in exchange for the book he has over there. <laughs> yes, yes, I'll give it to you. I... And he covers his mouth and Brock just, you know, looking around. Wondering what the hubbub is, and he just goes, yes, yes, please. I want to smell color. I want to talk to God. <laughs> please. Uh, you'll be talking to a lot of people after this. <laughs> as, yes. As, like... Like shakes his hand and then like like uh like basically five bags fall from his sleeve into the other sleeve. <laughs> yes, yes. Ooh, yes. Have the book. Have the book. In which case, like uh, Eddie is going to like uh, he'll w he'll wave a hand and like actually the the smoky like uh, the smoky hand of Eddie goes over, picks up the book, and like it it starts floating away. Okay. Towards here. <laughs> yeah. Just give yourself a secondary uh, a spell book. Don't need to purchase it. It's free. Um, uh -huh. Yep. Yeah. Nice. I would describe what this book looks like, but I actually want one of our players to explain what it looks like. Mega, what does Kobold spell book look like? <laughs> Oh, that raises a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, but if I am remembering correctly, like uh, this particular book, uh, like it actually is a very, uh, well, the funny part is that like, it's a bit on the, uh, the smaller side for a, for a spell book. Uh, but the, as far as like the appearance of the spell book itself, like it is a, uh, it is actually kind of like a brilliant uh, a blue color with, um, uh, I think I ultimately gave it like uh, orange trimmings. 
Uh, but like most notably is that like on the front cover, uh, like uh, would have be the um, uh, what is a a dragon's head, and mm. I'm not sure if they still would, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, mm. but like you know, like the like the the eyes seem to be like beset with uh, with two like uh, burnt orange gems that look deep into the person who is looking at it. Absolutely. Um, just to add on to that. Um, with how resistant a, a spell book can be, you don't see any damage or brittleness to the uh, pages, but you do see a little bit of yellow on the corners. It appears to have uh, some minor water damage. But with how spell books are and how the ink is, it's all still there. This might be very useful for me into testing some of an of a daunt of Eldritch writing. I've been experimenting, but I needed the spells. This might help. Do you open it? I mean, I have to, to analyze it. You open it, and it's like the writing of a madman. Do you read Draconic? Um, let me take a look. Ragged, um, I don't read Draconic. I see Giant, Common, and Primordial. However, I do. To. However, I do have the capabilities of being able to translate it. But what well, you're about to say? Only oh, again. I'll basically bring it to the party before I take my course of action of kind of translate this book, but I'm very happy with this purchase. Do you come closer? The hand uh, off the book or do you beckon people over? I mean, here's the problem. If I try to move closer, like, I might get the hard G. Don't want to have that, so. I prefer to say a hard I, but to each their own. <laughs> I mean, gutturally, I feel like the G would be worse. But regardless, I would back in some people back if they are done, like kind of like gesturing towards anyone that wishes to come forward to see her as, again, they don't want to stir the pot. Do you flip through any of the pages or do you just stay on the front page? I do kind of flip through some of the pages just kind of as people are approaching, if they do. Make me a wisdom saving throw. I got this, guys. Let me take a look. It's in a book. I did not get it this time. You are Ooh. frightened. And I need you to take, uh, yes. 3d8 psychic damage, please. Okay, let's see nope, how much damage. not psychic, sorry, sorry, I'm misremembering. Lightning. Owie. Mm-hmm. All right, roll damage, let's see it. Yes, ma'am. Nope, wrong one. You take eight lightning damage as you begin to flip through the pages and... You see the words begin to shift into a circular shape. And at the center, you see an eye, a split reptilian eye looking at you, pulsating. You see red veins around this eye as it stares at you. And after two blinks, it looks at your face and you feel the shock. It's enough to make you drop the book, and as it closes, you see it latch into a... Uh, what's the proper way of saying this? Uh, the leather strap around the book begins to bind itself, and you see a rusty bronze... Nope, I shouldn't say bronze. Cobalt color lock as you hear it clink. Literally, probably, like, grasping. It shot me in the face, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's not going to be, like, something that Seer can shrug off normally. This is very much like a... Ah, oh, son of a... 
kind of like just basically clutching their face as the book hits the ground. They're not even looking at the book. They're very much like they go onto their ears going like, ah. Deception, fuck. please. Deception. All right, let's do it. That is a pretty, I'm, well, that's going to suck for me. Right, let's do it. Basically, <laughs> yeah, the hood probably flies back. They're blessed! They're blessed! And you see them cower. Son blessed. of a... Blessed one. Man. I'm sorry. You... You are blessed. Please, we don't wish to be blessed. Looks to Aluia and Eddie and Mavet in confusion. Are you Gungra. Blessed? Yes, one of Gungra's blessed. Gungra? Yes, we're running from him. The Goblin King. You, you're a blessed one. Please, we'll give you what you want. Just don't bless us. Steer will slowly stand back up, picking up the book, not really looking at it, just kind of just like groaning a bit from the pain. And then simply just kind of looks to the two and goes like, I honestly don't want anything from you two for... No blade, I, no dagger, please. You'll get none of endangerment from me. You will simply get me to ask some questions. That's it. Which is strange because if memory serves me right, you do not have a blade or a dagger on your person. Correct. No, please. No. I am not an envoy of pain. I am an envoy of peace. We want to live. We want to live. And so you will. But... Explain your situation a bit more. I am confused, but also, well, how can I describe it? Perhaps I could help you with your situation. You see both red and blue look at each other, and they're unsure. Aluia, make me a perception ah. check. Kent. Also, probably Sears not really talking like I am quietly. They're probably yelling across to where they need to say it. Yeah. And because of the distance. The third time. You you hear a voice coming around where Seer is. It's guttural, but it, it's too far away. You can't make it out. Uh, Seer, I... I heard something. It did not sound good. Crash, I... crash, crash. Maybe come closer now. I'll, I'll go to you. Screw that. Um. Fear naturally approaches. Crash, crash, crash. Basically, like, Sierra, before you go all the way, Aluya, they're going to probably come closer. And, like,. like um, regardless, though, like, moving closer to the goblins, not enough to scare them. Did Mavet just run away again? No. I'm making a joke. Anyway. Please. N no. T st stay back. We, we don't want to be blessed. You will not be blessed unless you do not tell me more about your situation. <sighs> Uh, Aluya, me... go ahead. Aluya, you hear from the book. Give him back to me. Uh, 
your book just said something? Give him back to me, or I will come to you. Oh boy, well, something is looking for this book, and it wants it, wants it back. What I mean, I don't know, it shot me in the face. Uh, I just but... know it's owned by a previously known wizard of some sort. And it was written in a language I didn't know. I tried to explore it a little bit, and then it shot me in the face. Uh, what language can I see? You can't see any language, because the book locked itself up. Uh -huh. Unless someone is capable of picking a lock. Well... I got this, but not right now. Okay. <laughs> And, uh, I, I think, uh, the goblin strat, the blue goblin, just goes. Ever since Elzar left, we, we found a king. His name is Gunra. And he's been, he's been very, very evil he's been making deals with the fireman to the north and the goblins they and he looks towards Brock they have been taking on fire water dirt and air with his dagger Understandable. Then... Do you know where they are? For... If they have been adapting forms... I know who they are. And... Think of me less of... An envoy of them. Think of me as another force. To the east, blessed one, to the east. There is a fort that we claim as our own. There, he's building an army. He's making a machine. And you see Brock flinch at that. He says, he says it makes us strong. It is scary. Me and Brock, we, we don't like fighting. We just want to sell pretty trinkets. Then, with me around, you will continue to do so. I am not here to stop you from what you love. But I am here to resolve things similar to I. Mm -hmm. And now, again, what, what, what's really striking you as weird is, by the sounds of it, it, it sounds like these goblins are going through the process of becoming Genasi, but uh, two strange things pop out to you. One, it's not a singular element. Two, again, there's no Watcher. Something very, very unusual is happening. Sarah will just kind of like pat their head and go like, <sighs> every single time it gets stranger and stranger. He, he says the taker from the fireman is our only hope to survive. This... It is what will make us strong, but when we, when we change, we don't keep our, and he taps his head, we don't stay the same. They become 
monsters. Then, I think you would agree with this since you do not see me as a blessed, but more of cursed. I will investigate this thing. And you may not care about your people since you left. You made that decision a long time ago. However, if I am able to bring truth to what the situation is, it might bring you at ease since I do not think they have been blessed, but instead forced into a much larger scaled thing if you are describing a fired man. Yes, they call him Firebird. It, Brock, what was the name? F Phoenix? Phonix? What's the word? The I Firebird. Think I looks to the group and going like, I'm guessing we're not also having to hunt down just strange plants. We might have to figure out the goblin situation. Mm -hmm. And again, it you recall the... I, was, I hesitate to say prophecy, but the vision that was provided to you by Rose Gold, where she went over the generals, and one in particular that was a fire genasi nearby... Oh, yeah. I already know. Phoenix. Infernal Wix. Nope. Yeah. Phoenix. Oh, oh Phoenix. Yeah, you're, now I know what you're talking yeah. about. Is the Necromancer the Phoenix? Yep. He, oh. He's a scary man. The undead, they follow his words. They ask the king. They... He asked the king for more. And we never give enough. Then. How far away, like, is this king? Oh, not, not far away. About a half a day's journey to the east. And you will find him. Follow the road. And we'll take you right there, but be careful. He is... It looks to both sides. He is strong. He is crafty. He is smart. In the machine. Beware of the machine. Good to know. Before we go, then... I only have two more questions, and then I will not bless you. Consume tight. The best way I can ask is this. One, what is this machine? And then number two, have you been noticing a strange growth of some sort similar to, and we'll point to Mavet's arm? Of that similar nature with the undead walking about? It is the village destroyer. Humans, they get crushed by the machine. Goblins, they pull rope and chains and make it move. It can, it can get into any house, any building, any stone, castle. It is terrifying. Even together, we are weak, but inside of it, we are strong. Don't let the goblins get in it. Oh, I'm not worried about them getting in it. In fact, I think they would not want to be in it in the first place. But go, go on. The, th the thorns? The spikies? And looks towards the... Uh looks towards my vet and just goes oh yes the undead they all have them and it makes it makes the fire bird very angry he doesn't like the vines he asks us he asks us 
find clean bodies, but they look clean. Well then, that's very good information to know. Be careful. Looks Be careful where you step. The king, he's making the other tribes angry. The Prick Prick tribe. They are very angry. If so, maybe we can use it as an asset. But for now, here's all I ask for you two then. If we cross paths one more time, do not treat me as an enemy. Treat me as someone that wishes nothing more but to bring peace to those. Even if you still fear me. What is peace? A very nice thing. Nice. Similar to sweet stuff. Does, does peace get you high? It gets mm. you more chances to be high. <gasps> Brock, we must buy peace. Yes, we must buy peace. How many pieces is this piece? Mm, good question. Just ask. We shall have peace when you come back. We'll find it. I'm going to be so weirded out when they bring <laughs> something that has peace on it. And it's like, <laughs> we found peace. But anyhow. Um, unless anyone else has any other questions for them, I would let them go as we continue on, as now we have a new plan. Sure you don't want to question the books? Oh, I'm I'm definitely not interested in questioning the books because, okay. like, one, I'm pissed off at one of the books. <laughs> and two, I'm, <laughs> I'm very much in the situation where, like, I could ask about the other book, but that book, I think, will piss me off further if it does something else, too. I'm very much in this mentality of I ain't touching them books. If people want to ask about the books, they can. Like, I know Aaliyah might be interested about one book. It's the, the, the one that Seer has, right? And then I didn't see Eddie purchase the second book. I have two books you with two. me. and I wouldn't separate but them. It's hard to miss the book that was literally, like, floating with, uh, with Smokey Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he did buy it right in front of you, too, Luya. He bought, bought both books. Together? Or he yeah. went back? Yeah, L Livy's book was bought right in front of you. The one you'd taken an interest in wasn't bought in front of you, but you, you've been paying attention to it. Okay. So you're aware of both. Uh, I'm only interested in one book. The, the one that wants to return back to wherever... But, um, Ask away. We'll 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 get to that later because that's the one that's closed, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I have no means of opening it right now, so I would just see if Eddie or Seer could open it. Bring him back. She's just gonna make a face like, "All right, so are we done here? Maybe wrap that it. thing up in a blanket or something." Like, what does that book keep saying? Um, well, he wants to go back to whatever. Uh, somebody is looking for it. Did you, like, ask who? Hey, book. Who are you trying to go back to? I don't want book. Bring me cobalt. I. It doesn't want the book. It wants cobalt. I don't know who that is. If that is the owner's name, it's probably that spellcaster of the book. Sure. How are we supposed to 
bring him someone we don't know. Well, if we don't know where they are, we just simply find out later. If you can alleviate them, we could tell them that. We could begin searching for them, and then we just come back to Granny's house later. Uh, hey, Book. Why do you need this kobold? He is my servant. Bring him back. Uh, Book says that Kobold is his servant and we should bring him back. And who are you exactly? Vitandis. Vitandis? Does anybody know that name, Vitandis? History checks all around, except for Mavet. Huzzah! Fifteen. Hmm. Uh, I'll go for that in a second. Let me just write this down before it mm. leaves my memory. Hmm. Give him to me. Um, I'll guidance myself. You said history. Mm -hmm. uh... oh. Yeah. Seer. Luya. You are aware that Vitandis is the name of a dragon. Now, typically... I would say in your guys' uh, uh, memory that regular scaleless dragons, their names are too unimportant to remember. Or even, I would go so far as to say, most of the times they aren't given a real name. With this one in particular, you know this as a scaled dragon. The significance of it is there is only one scaled dragon at a time. The way that dragons in this world get their scales is by killing the dragon of color. Essentially, Highlander rules. There can only be one. Vitandis is the name of an ancient dragon. I specifically, hopefully, remember they are a blue dragon. If that's Rat. correct. Actually, they're pink. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it, it breaks the whole system? Uh. Fair enough. Uh oh oh damn. Okay, yes, I think I know this one. <laughs> um, and just to really put it in perspective of how dangerous this creature is, by walking, it causes chaos. By flying over cities, it's the flap of its wings destroys buildings. You don't want it to come to you. Okay. You better tell it that we're going to go find its servant. Uh, well, here's the thing, though. If by bringing the servant... It might make it worse uh, from what I actually remember this now. Um, this guy is not really the best. Um, it's a dragon, like an old dragon, like old, old dragon. Uh, I think well, go ahead, go ahead. Well, it's got scales and I think they get it from killing a, a colored dragon. Uh, it's not good, okay? It's it's big, it's dangerous, and we don't want to fuck with it. Then, mm -hmm. let me tell you this logic then. One, would you A, want to carry the book around and have it come to you, or we alleviate it from coming anywhere, and we bring it to the servant where it won't cause the chaos? Because even if we leave it with these goblin guys here, they probably won't want it back. And worst off, worst off, if it struck me in the face, it probably already saw what I looked like. So it probably won't be happy that I left its book about. All right. Well, I guess we can bring it back, but 
Hey, book. Mm. Uh, where are you? Just so we have like a GPS location on you. <laughs> GPS. <laughs> oh my god. I am to the north in the Titan Sea in the volcanic arc of worms. Eddie would actually know this because he lives close by. In the volcanic arc oh, of Hey, bros, I know that place. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Uh, and if memory serves with the one shot that we did not do recorded uh, you guys had been on a draconic island before uh, where your adventure truly started is around the area where this creature is mm-hmm I have to find another boat, though. Yeah, uh... Because you bros can't swim. <laughs> no, I, I... Well... Without my armor, I'm okay. I'm an okay swimmer. I'm, I'm decent, you know. Uh, but still, like... Uh, book? I have a name. Use well, it, girl. Well, you're a book right now, so this is how we're going to channel through. Uh, what do you need your servant for? Do you touch the book at all? No. I have not. Oh, it. fuck. I'm holding the book, aren't I? Ah. <laughs> do it. Uh, Commit. Do it. Great. I know. I know. The first one was from reading it. This is a volatile reaction, so I'm going to say a constitution save for this one. All right, let's do it. We've been rolling all fails today. Let's roll a fail now. I on prob honestly, I'm not even sure if you can make this. Oh. I won't. Even if I roll, like, no. Let me tell okay, you this. so you get a, a six modifier. Okay. I do yeah. get a plus six. Okay, then never mind. You you can make these saves, but not this save. Not with the fifteen. Take a three d eight damage, please. I'll, I'll roll it for you. Lightning. Six damage. The ton dis. Oh, what sucks too is that uh, if it's lightning damage. In electrocution, you can't really yeah. let go of the block. Yeah, you're gripping on to it. You see that Tears. your words are hurting your friend. Oh, what are you saying? This is not very great, Aluya. Ow. Ow. Just, just be cool, man. Okay, just uh, chill out. Viton this. Viton this. Vitandis. Does she like keep making it more and more upset? <laughs> I'm I'm trying to accommodate for you, Luia, but now it's starting to become rather ow. Okay, well if you want I will take the ouchies. You can hand the book to me. Do you grab the book? If she's willing to part with it. I can't let <laughs> You have to grab it. It's very much like, no, I'm being electrocuted. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm describing it as like, I can't let go. My hands are cramping holding the book. Uh, and we just, I'm just... I'm gonna push your fingers off it. it this just... Push! <laughs> okay. Just, just grab it if you want to have it. I, but... I got it just so I'm going to kind of, you know, use yeah. my foot as a boost to pull off you. Mm. And I just imagine both of us just like fly off each other. <laughs> as it comes into your hand, Aluya, mm -hmm. the lock opens 
the book springs open and the pages begin to flip until like at the I, I should really explain at the spine of this book is the dead center of this uh, circle of words. So you got a half moon on one page, half moon on the other, and you see this draconic eye peering at you. Is that what you look like? And you see the eye move, a snout begins to move towards it. You feel an intake of air pulling at your hair. You smell of a sea. I smelt these waters before. And you see its toothy... Yeah, you see its teeth begin to peer through it as it begins to speak to you. Maybe I should look for these waters. Destroy everything around these waters. Ah, smells of roses. Mm. And the eye gets back in position. What is my name? I mean, I re repeated it three times. I do have an accent, so bear with me here, Vitandus. That is right, girl. I, like, but I said it before, I... Okay. I don't think they were mad about you saying it wrong. I think they were mad that you were calling them book. At least that's what I got from something out of this. I don't know, when you said book, that made them mad. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> <sighs> My servant is a kobold. Blue scales. His name is Cobalt. Say it back to me. Is a blue kobold named Cobalt. Cobalt. That's what I said. Damn it! I have an accent. <laughs> Luya seems not, like really distressed. <laughs> do not forget the name. And you see, as like the book shifts across like parts of its body, eventually you see pink skin on what you'd presume to be its hand, which is very strange to you because, again, the Stragon should have scales all around its body, but you see pink flesh, and it swerves back again, nose, teeth, and eye. Like it's trying to peer through you through a peephole. Well, we will do what we can. We have a lot on our plate, so we we are get our ducks in a row. Hmm. How long will it take? Uh, dude, I cannot give you a time frame. We make me a wisdom. Guys. Make me a constitution saving throw for saying, dude. <laughs> <laughs> You've been warned. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> I have inspiration. You can yeah. roll that inspiration. <laughs> if you desire. Constitution saving throw. I just love how Aluya makes friends wherever she goes. Yeah. <laughs> um, where are we? Let's see this. Boop, 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 boop. That's enough. Half damage. 3d8. Lightning. You take 16, which is down to 8. You 
did very good. Uh, I take half of that too. Yep, so quarter. So four damage. And as you begin to take that damage and resist it, it repeats back to you. Say it. We turned this. That was like... Thank you? That For that charge, I... I it's kind of rude, but... The albatross. I've... Yes, I've seen. I've seen this before. Man. Yes. Who is your god? Oh, it's a good question. Have you heard about the good Lord Aeolus? <laughs> <laughs> oh, then then he shocks you again what did I do wrong this time I said who is your god now <laughs> not you daddy <laughs> oh god um yes I know him uh, that's quite something to Wow, you, have you met him before? Like, you, you've shaken hands and stuff? Have I met him? <laughs> Tell me, girl. Do you know who he was before he ascended? Just no, but I will... Boy, this is quite a story. Um, give me a moment, guys. I'm Story time. You see... He went through a storm as a mere mortal. I was that storm. Oh. He was a clever man. Silver mm -hmm. tongue. Charming. How unlike you. Well, we all have a Sad. damn horse. I also know the town he went to, the town he made. Don't forget that, girl. <sighs> the eye just stares at you, waiting for you to give it a date. I can't give you a date for something I have no clue about. If I could, I would. Hi. Oh. Go ahead, go ahead. F F go right ahead. You first. I was saying, above table, Leah, if you give it a date, it means then it won't give you a date. Um, yes, that. Thank okay. you, Sierra. Well, twelve years from now, we could definitely <laughs> assist you. Con save. You asked for a number. I'm trying to be realistic here. <laughs> Sorry, that. I think maybe after the second shock, Eddie would just feel the need, just like. Hey, like, bro, what are you telling it? <laughs> She's yeah. Half Enlighten us. You failed it, but you're resistant, so six. Six lightning damage, as this one stung a bit more. He would not live that long. I want my servant. Bruv, what are they saying and what do you keep saying that makes you keep getting shot like that? the time frame of for his servant. I, he wants to know when he can get his servant back, but one, we don't know where this kobold is. Two, uh, we have our own shit to deal with. I mean, actually, that's... Actually, hold on. Because uh, maybe... Like, maybe this will be easier. It's like, uh, 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 Bubble Gray, like, uh, what season are we again? 
What season? Yeah. Oh, define season. You mean episode wise or actual see like in world like uh, uh, nature? I mean, season? look, it would be a funny joke to say, oh, at the end of the season. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, the actual like season we are currently in within the campaign that is. I don't like where you're going with of... this, but fall. I don't like where you're going with this. <laughs> Are we at like the middle of fall, beginning of fall, what? Beginning of fall. All right, then like uh, Eddie will say by the just tell them we'll have them by the time that the flowers bloom again. <laughs> uh okay. <laughs> forgot his name give me a second yeah Vita say the name kids. what was that actually no what he will do that this specifically because he's going to intuit something and switch to primordial and say exactly that <laughs> it, Vedantis, uh okay when what was it out of character when the flowers bloom he's doing it in primordial like, yeah. don't worry okay. about it yeah he's just seeing if yeah. like maybe like maybe he's maybe he's multilingual <laughs> And he's not interested in seeing Aluya get shocked for a third time. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, so you see it respond back in Primordial. I'm not sure if Aluya or anyone else in the party understands it, but oh, it, yeah, it yeah. does respond back Seems in nice. Primordial. Yep. When the flowers bloom... <sighs> that will be suffice. I wish for my servant to be brought back alive to my island. If he is not here when the flowers bloom, I know where I'll stop first. And you just see smoke begin to like be puffed out through the hole. And the book begins to close and lock. Well, there, guys. Now we have about three years to figure this out. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the moment he mentioned seasons, he's like, Fuck, he knows I don't move fast with my seasons. Ha! <laughs> but also... You got a lot of time. <laughs> sitting there going, like, looking at a Leah, going like, well, that was a painful introduction. Um, for you, yes, I'm very sorry. Uh, it was like a tickle for me. But I understand. You Note. should probably be careful what you say when you're still holding on to the book. Well... <laughs> Like I said, it wasn't so bad for me. He kind of was a prick, but he was Constitution to... save. I put the book away. That's I don't still... care. <laughs> Just because the book is closed doesn't mean it can't fucking hear you. Do it, man. Do it. I'll eat that shit. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. <laughs> Can I cast vulnerability on <laughs> yeah. It depends if you can... Give me, give me initiative, both of you. I want to see how fast you can respond. I'm making a joke. I'm making a joke. Oh, I can't fuck do that. It all. Yeah, thirteen halved. That'd be six. Yeah, it's still six. Delicious. Please yeah, don't. Yeah, it shocks you. Please don't tempt fate. I already did it with my end. Don't add to it. You just hear it growl. Anyhow. Gets back up and puts a hand up to Aluya. Okay. I'm assuming Aluya's standing up. Yeah. I'm gonna, uh, because I feel bad, I'm going to, uh, third level, no, fourth level. I'm not that damaged. I felt bad. Well, third level. There we go. 
cure wounds, yeah. Beep beep pop beep boop boop boop. Where is my cure wounds? Here it is. Beep pop boop boop boop. Oh my god, that's 19. Jesus. Mm -hmm. You healed you healed the wrong one. That's wrong. I saw that healing on him. Mm -hmm. <sighs> All right. Now we know what we need to do. Eddie, thank you. Now, let's leave these that poor the goblins. I've ever had to think. <laughs> what I will say is this, though: let's leave these goblins in peace. And I think what we should do is actually head towards peace. the goblin fort. Peace. We need to find <laughs> peace. Keep yes. looking; you'll find it. I'm sure it's cheap. But yes. If we figure out the goblin situation, we might be able to figure out the Zombrin situation. Okay. So you guys leave. I mean, do we have anything else to do here, guys? Pants? Do you guys are you guys gonna do anything else? I'm ready to go. You know, I am kind of wondering. This Goblin King is kind of nearby, and they do seem to have, like, rested a lot of their hopes onto a single thing. Yeah, the DM used the buzzword hope. Ah. Oh. Well... Unicorn hunting to the side. <laughs> oh, dang it. We're going to have to hunt a unicorn another day. <laughs> oh, golly gee whiz, guys. I wanted to find a unicorn. <laughs> oh, jeez, guys. I wanted to find a unicorn. Put him up, put him up. All right. Just clarify. You guys are moving forward? Ooh, we. We. Okay. You guys begin oh, to travel. Oh, actually. Actually, before we, sorry, I not not think about it. Uh, did Seer actually want to sell her potions of clairvoyance, or just? Uh... No, no, I'm not selling it for thirty gold. The potions literally worth like five hundred to five thousand gold nor. Oh yeah, that is a really goddamn good potion, and I have a potion of invulnerability, which is like fifty thousand gold. Yeah, well, you know, before maybe... shit happened, like uh, Eddie couldn't even like give the pitch for what they actually were, but I get that. <laughs> yeah. A lot of things happened. You know what else is going to happen? As you guys begin to leave, I need everyone to make me a perception check. Boy, I've been doing great with those. Yeah. I've been Good doing on. great with that as well. Look at that. I rolled a six. Uh, guidance, because I've been rolling ones with them. You're asking a lot from us, Gray, when we've been rolling kind of crappy. Oh, yeah, and I love it. Those are my favorite type of rolls. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, you got a 21, oh, finally. Yeah. Just to add on to it. Just Am to I still at disadvantage? Yes, you are. You're still exhausted. <laughs> well, I just, I'd want to know because freezing the thing that did anything. Oh, it did. And I will guide him on top of that. Yeah, it did. It just didn't cure you of exhaustion. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So if you if you haven't noticed, you that. haven't been having schizophrenia or making a saving throw since then. I know, I know. I know. Yeah. Okay, so what I have is 15. wow, Aluya, fucking ah. with the highest That's roll it. here. Yeah, so 21, 13, 12, and six. Again, biggest one is Aluya. All right. I have 16, not 13. Oh, yeah. has 24. I died in. Yeah, 24. <clears throat> Still not enough. Uh, Aluya, on the other hand, she did really good. So I 
I'm gonna show you guys what the hell is up here. It'll be a nice thing to end on. It's a new friend that wants yeah. to give Aluya a hug. Yeah. I'll take the hugs. Yeah. Keep these Turns hugs out away it's on from fire. Me. <laughs> yeah, you see a lot of tiny porcupine creatures begin to lurk closer, but they don't think that you've seen them yet. Aluya is the only one who's noticed them, but they're brandishing bows, some uh, some of them are brandishing uh, swords, very rudimentary, very primitive, but they have surrounded you guys. Aluya, what do you do? I don't want to alarm anyone, but we are being tracked by adorable little hamsters with, like, weapons. That's a good thing to put alarm, because adorable things tend to be deadly. Hmm. Yes, I agree, but... Oh. Look, they're over there. Look. look. I don't want to look. I'll fall for their cuteness. First one comes up, spear in hand, and he says, Aww. Don't move! <laughs> in the name of the king, you are our prisoners. Oh my god. It's a tiny little porcupine. And it's to keep in mind, fault. it's barely up to your thighs. Spear falls it's under it. <laughs> They are adorable, though. We will not stand for Gungra's tyrannical reign. You're coming with us. And they got little spears, and they're jabbing you with it. And here's the adorable part about it, Seer, is that you would think that the tip would be sharpened, but it, it's a little too blunt to draw blood. Hallelujah. I'm joining you on this. They're so damn cute. I, I can't help what it. What do you want? Just oh, let me pet you. No, I don't want to be insensitive. Just You look so cute. I want to pet them, but I don't want to burn them. I'm fearsome, I swear. Yes, you're so fierce. I agree. I'm, I'm terrified. Oh, I'm so warning you. We I'll poke smuggle. you. <laughs> Oh, oh, I want to. Oh, I want to come what? back to this next session. Yeah, Glad, good. Yeah, uh, no, you that's... know what, little bra? Yeah. We'd actually like to really meet your leader. <gasps> would that be chill? I didn't think that would actually work. Yay! Yes, you are our prisoners, and you will come with us <laughs> forthwith. And he points his spear to the goblins. You as well. Are you sure? N no? Yes. <laughs> Want to be blessed? <laughs> no. <laughs> they droop their heads. And I kind of want to imagine if you guys don't resist. Like, they, they have like tiny carts to transport you in. And like a tiny cage but they try to shove Mavet in one of the cages and it ends up breaking. And they're just like chattering at each other before just basically giving you guys a ride as they like uh, <laughs> steer the cart by hand and on foot like into the forest. And that's where we'll end for this session. Thank you guys so much for bearing with me. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Porky Pines. <laughs>